All right, in this video, I'm gonna be covering the entire outbound strategy we've used to book 1,000 plus meetings for our clients, for ourselves. And this is gonna be covering the entire strategy from email account setup to actually closing the deal. Everything happens in between there, and this is all done through outbound. Um, this is the exact strategy we use at our agency, revgrowth.ai. You can check us out there if you're interested. Um, but yeah, this is how you're going to be able to scale your B2B company in 2024 or just whenever you watch this. Um, but yeah, let's dive into it. All right. So starting from the very beginning, this is setting up the email accounts, right? So the setting platform we're going to use, we're going to start off with smartly.ai. This is what we found to be the best setting platform on the market. Um, there's other competitors like Instantly. Instantly is fine. We just have been using Smartly for the past year, um, ever since it start, ever since it came out. They have a lot more features, a lot of API integrations you could use. Um, I think if you really want to take Coldy most seriously, Smartly is the move. Uh, but yeah, like there are a lot of different you know integrations that you can do with Smartly, right? From there, we're going to set up 200 email accounts. Um, depending on how much volume you want to push, depending on your, on your TAM. Let's say your TAM is like, you have, you know, 10 million companies in your TAM. You can set up, in theory, like a thousand email accounts and push, you know, 10,000 emails a day. But just like we're saying on average, we're going to want to set up about 200 email accounts uh, per client. And what we do is we want to diversify these email accounts. So what we're doing is we're using a mix of private infrastructure, Google accounts, like, you know, typical G Suite accounts, and then Outlook accounts, right? Um, we want to diversify things just in case, you know, let's say Outlook is having issues or Google's having issues, or let's say the private infrastructure just gets taken away. Then we want to be able to, you know, um, have backup, right? And not have to put all of our eggs in one basket when it comes to email accounts. And this could also help with deliverability a bit too, right? Because if we do sending matcher, um, sending provider matching to where we have uh, smartly.ai because they automatically do this. We have it to where our Gmail accounts only send emails to other Gmail accounts and then the Outlook accounts send emails to other Outlook accounts. Um, but in terms of the, the private infrastructure I mentioned earlier, so what we're using is we're using a platform or using a service called um, Superwave. You can find them at new.superwave.ai. Um, they've been the, the, the best in private infrastructure we found in the market so far. So I'd recommend checking them out. Um, the advantage we get with them is that we basically just pay like a yearly fee and then we pay for a fee per email accounts when we set up. Essentially how it works, um, we buy a domain from them. They can set up hundred email accounts from one domain, which is not typical for any other, you know, email provider, right? Because typically what you want to do when you're setting up email accounts, right? You want to buy one domain and then set up two inboxes per domain. Um, that's what you want to do per for Google and Outlook, right? But for this private infrastructure, we can set up 99 email accounts per domain um, because, you know, they have their own domain integrate IP integration that they use that somehow able to bypass all that. Um, and we can also pa bypass most of the warm up process. They say you want to warm up the email accounts for like three days, um, but obviously three days is a lot faster than, you know, two weeks with um, typical email accounts, right? So there is an edge we get with working with um, Superwave, right? But yeah, and then with that, and I'll, I'll also mention the sending practices we do with that too. Um, so for Google and Outlook, we send 20 cold emails per day per account, and then we're sending 30 warm, warm emails per day. But then with Superwave, they have a different setup. So you can only send eight emails per day per account. And then you want to have, you're sending like 50 uh, more emails per day per account from that. Um, and yeah, and with these email accounts, you always, you also want to switch to aliases, have different names on each of the domains. You don't want the same name for every single one of your, one of your email accounts or else that's going to lead to deliverability issues, right? Because I mean, Google, Google or Alex is going to detect like, okay, why does Jerry have, you know, 100 email accounts in this one Google workspace? Like it doesn't make sense, right? So you want to switch up, have multiple people within your company, uh, from the email accounts you're sending from that will help out a lot. But yeah, and then with this, we can typically send about 4,000 emails per day. And from those 4,000 emails per day, we're going to have two different campaign categories. And the reason why we do this is because we want to have, so we, with our strategy, we want to be able to send really high volume, but we also want to have, you know, really relevant personalized emails, right? And 
the sort of middle ground we found with this, because, you know, we build lists for certain clients to where we, we obviously want to be as relevant as niche now as possible. But um, when you do that, you know, the campaign volume goes down because you can, let's say you make a, let's say you, you we create a list of like uh, pet brands that are above hundred K per month and have Clavio install this technology. Like that list is going to end up being like 200 people. Right. And if we're saying 4,000 emails per day, I mean, that, that list is gone in two hours. Right. So it's just not, it's not enough volume. So we want to have a combination of being able to have these really targeted lists, uh, these really targeted campaigns, but also have a lot of volume pumping in the back end. So we just have constant lead flow. Right. And the sort of middle ground we found with this was having a micro and a macro campaign. And I'll sort of explain these two. So I'll, I'll talk about the macro one first. And essentially how this works is the macro campaign. This is where you're going to have, this is going to be like, you're, you're just scraping like essentially your entire TAM and kind of pop into one campaign. Obviously you don't want to like, you know, just scrape a mil, like a million. I mean, you, I guess you could in theory, let's say like you're, you do like SEO or like website design, you could scrape every local business in America and create a super broad campaign, but you can just scrape your entire TAM, um, your entire qualified relevant TAM and kind of just put this, put them in this one campaign. Um, obviously you don't have to do the entire TAM. You can do like big chunks of it, but yeah, essentially broader targeting. You want a list that has about, you know, between like at least like 5,000 leads, right? Um, if you want to push it, let's say minimum 1,000 emails per day. Yeah. Even more than that, like let's say 7,000 to, to 10,000 leads you want in this campaign. Really we're going for heavy volume. As I said before, you know, pushing like 2,000 emails per day minimum. Eventually, you could try to get to like 4,000 emails per day. Um, if, you're, if you're saying like 2,000 emails per day, that's pretty good. And then, yeah, really what we want to do is just kind of like these short to the point scripts where all we're focusing on is like having a no-brainer upfront offer or like an excellent sales asset, right? So one of the best performing emails ever we ever send, still the best performing emails we're ever sending is, so just, just like one sentence emails leading with a no brand front, front offer, like offering some sort of free work. It's just one sentence saying like, hey, you know, we'll set up an, a cold email campaign, campaign for you. We'll set up the inboxes. We'll scrape 5,000 leads for you and build out a campaign for you. 100% done for you for free. Is that, interested to, is that interesting to you? That's it, boom, that performs. And let's say for email marketing, um, offering a free email campaign, like would you be interested in a free email campaign? Boom, that, like, that's basically the full email, right? Obviously we add more personalization, but I'm not going to give away our entire strategy on that, but yeah, essentially really just getting to the point, having some sort of like broader messaging. So this can be at scale. Um, and really we're just maximizing for that constant lead flow. Cause you know, you have a lot more consistency in sending these really high volume campaigns. Cause you just kind of, they're, they're kind of like a rhythm. Let's say, you know, you say you're booking one meeting every 1000 emails, right? If you're saying 2000 emails per day, then, you know, it's, it's a constant, like two, one, two meet, um, leads per day coming through one, two meetings per day coming through. And that's just good to have in the back end, Right. But on the flip side, so what we want to do with the, these micro campaigns is this is where we're going to build these really targeted lead lists. As I spoke about before where these, these, these lead lists will be a lot smaller. Let's say it's like between a hundred, give me like 50 leads. Give me even less than that. Um, to, you know, like 500 leads. Let's, this is where we're like really trying to find some like really specific intent within um, the list. So let's say people are hiring for a specific role, people using a specific technology, um, you know, specific location, specific buying signals, things like that, right? Where, you know, a lot of companies are not gonna have that. So you can't really build that big of a list. But in this case, you know, that's fine because on the back end, we're gonna have these macro campaigns firing. So on the front end, we can build these smaller micro campaigns and really just what we're trying to go for here is like these super high conversions on um, the email to send email sent to meetings booked ratio, right? Like, for example, we had a campaign that had like 50 leads, but it was for a very specific niche for a client that had a really good case study. And uh, we sent out that campaign, we booked like three meetings from 50 leads, which is obviously that's a super high metric. But as you can see, they're still worth it's, it's still worth it to do those campaigns, right? Um, even though it's super low volume, there's still value in that because we're, we're targeting our like most, most ideal, uh, sort of customers or like those people are who are super untapped, right? That's the, that's the, the goal going through people who are like the most ideal 
or going for those clients that are super untapped. That's really what we're going for the, in these micro campaigns. And also with this, we can do a lot more AI personalization because, you know, doing heavy AI personalization at scale, like doing it across that, doing that across the list as like 20K leads, that can get pretty expensive. I mean, you still can do that if you want to, but um, yeah, it might just be too much. But what we can do here is like really kind of make sure that AI personalization is really solid for each of these micro campaigns. And we can really taper, tailor the script copy um, to the campaign since the lead list is so low. There's not going to be much vari variability in the list, right? But yeah, as I said before, we're really just trying to maximize for high lead conversions, right? So once we've kind of decided, okay, like which campaign we want to go with, this is where the actual campaign creation process starts, right? So what we always want to start off with is we want to sort of build our thesis, right? And just decide, okay, like, well, first obviously we have to decide, you know, who we're going to target, um, what's the ICP? Is it going to be a micro campaign? Like, are we targeting like a really small um, niche here? Or are we just kind of going with the full TAM and, you know, targeting a pretty big segment of your entire ICP, right? And then from there, we're going to obviously create a campaign smart lead. Um, and then, so some people like personally, um, what I like to do when I start my campaign creation process, I like to start with writing the scripts first, but some people like to, to build the lead list first. It's up to you. So I just kind of put them all side by side here, but I'll talk about writing the actual scripts first. And what we're gonna start with here is creating an offer thesis, right? And the reason why we start with this offer thesis is because your scripts are going to be based around the offer. The number one thing that is going to book meetings from a good, from a script, like, and really what makes a script, a good script is the offer that is presented within the script. Right. And when I mean with the offer, it doesn't have to be your entire agency offer, right? This, this offer, what you want to present over cold email is typically something that's like to get the client's foot into the door to where you can then upsell them to the main offer. Right. Um, and that's typically regarding some sort of free work. So I'll, I'll sort of discuss this. So uh, what I mean by a sales asset here is, so what we used to do a lot before was we would have, we would sort of dish out these like documents and case studies at scale. This is what I sort of coined as a sales asset um, over cold email. These do still work if you have like a, you know, really solid case study or, you know, you have a really valuable document or like sort of like presentation you wanna share with someone that works. and. The way the way the reason why I sort of split this up is because, you know, the way your funnel when it comes to booking meetings is it's going to be different, right? Because when you send when you have a sales asset in place, you need to send them like a link or attachment to the sales asset. But in the other case that you don't have one or you don't create one, um, we're going to leverage a front end offer or a case study, right? And what I mean by this is for the front end offer. That's what I was talking about before, where you're offering some sort of like free work, some some foot in the door offer to just, yeah, get your client's foot in the door, just prove to them that you know what you're doing and then upsell them up to the main offer. And right now, as of, you know, 2024, this is like, we're, we're in Q3 now, or no, end of Q2. Um, this has been the most effective strategy or cold email. It's just leveraging a really good friend offer, leveraging some really solid free work um, or having a hyper relevant case study. So let's say, for example, we had a campaign we ran for our influencer marketing agency recently, where they had they had a case study with Skillshare, and that's a really it's probably the biggest company in this whole the whole e-learning company space. And we we created a campaign targeting these e-learning companies that have like fifty plus employees, so they're all doing millions per year. Um, and the campaign absolutely ripped, right? Because I mean, it's massive social proof. Uh, they also had a really solid case study document that we could share with them. But yeah, if you have a really good case study, that, that could be just enough for booking meetings, right? But you can also, just with the case study, you can also pair on top of that um, a friend and offer, right? You, you, you don't have to do either or, but the thing is if you do, if you do both at the same time, the, the email might be a bit warty and then they could get kind of confused. But um, something that we like to do is we like to sort of just lead with the friend and offer. And then in the PS section, we mentioned like a, a relevant case study. Right. And that's sort of a, that's a deadly trio, right? A, a deadly, deadly trio is, you know, having a really good front end offer, having some like AI personalization around that. And then also having a case in the PS that's like a, that's like a pristine email. Right. But yeah, and you, then you go, but you can also test, you know, creating a sales asset and running that it still works. Um, but I would say ideally having a front offer is the best. And then 
around with, with, with this in place, right? Then essentially all you have to do is just write your script around it, right? Like script writing is super easy. If you have a, an amazing friend offer or if you have a great case study or if, a, if you have a really unique sales asset, um, all you want to write your email around is ab around these things, right? Of course, you can also mention pain points. Um, that's one I didn't have here, but that's something that you would kind of decipher in the offer thesis. And that's something that we use AI to sort of break that down. I'll probably create a video on how we do. Actually, I might not create a video on it, but I'll, I'll probably create like a brief sort of summary on how we use, you know, GPT to do like deep market research for each of our clients um, and create this offer thesis in the first place. But yeah, you can also leave the pain point and then transition into offering some free work or a sales asset or mentioning a case study, right? Then after that, of course, we're going to build our lists. Um, so this is going to, the, the, the initial sort of list building process, it's going to depend on, of course, you know, which, what, what niche you're targeting, what, what industry you're targeting. Um, so you, you'll start with your initial database, depending on, yeah, the industry you're targeting. So let's say you're doing e-commerce, you start with store leads. If you're doing SaaS, you could do get Ladka, um, or Crunchbase. Yeah. If you're targeting funding companies, you can go with Crunchbase, things like that. And then you build. From there, you'll build your account list um, with that. And then you can import that into Apollo or Clay. If you're, you'd import in Clay if you have like a really specific sort of um, enrichment you need to do for finding certain people within the company. But in most cases, you can just import it into Apollo and then scrape the list from there. Choose the decision makers from there and scrape the list. Um, for list scraping from Apollo, there's tons of cust like those custom scrapers you can find. Um, I posted a video, video on recently. I, I took down the video because the scraper got taken down. But um, yeah, you can, I'm sure you can find one. There's one that we're using right now is it's called urbanstarter.in. You guys can look that up on your own. I'm not going to add a link to it because I don't want the, the scraper to get taken down again. Um, but if you do enough research, you can find a scraper to scrape a poll for cheap, right? And then from there, um, we're going to verify the emails. Of course, we just use like million verifier. That's always consistent, it's cheap, it works well. And then from there, we're going to enrich the list. And what I mean by this is this is where we're going to do any like personalization, find any more unique data. Um, this is where we're going to segment the list uh, according to data, if that is relevant. Um, like for example, if we're targeting e-commerce brands that are either running ads or not running ads, then this would be important. Or if we're targeting companies that are hiring for a specific role, they're hiring for, hiring for like a finance role, if they're hiring for a marketing role, um, things like that. If they recently got funded, all these kinds of things, right? That's where we do this. And we do this all inside of clay.com. This is where we also do the AI personalization, as I mentioned before. Um, essentially have their Claygent tool, analyze their website, and you can do any personalization off that. But yeah, it's a big part of the process for sure. I'm going to create like a whole video in the future on just enrichment, right? Because it's such an important skill nowadays. And of course, yeah, create the new campaign, add this to smart lead. And this is where we're going to add all to smart lead. I know this is all really basic stuff. I basically wrote this, wrote this out like an SOP, launch, pain, launch the campaigns, send the emails. And this is where we're going to get to the actual inbox management part of things, right? So let's say in this case, a full campaign is ran, right? Yeah. So let's say a full campaign is ran. All the leads have been contacted, received all their follow-up. So let's say a lead has gone through the entire campaign. If they have not responded, um, I'll cover this first before I go into the actual inbox management. What we're going to do is we're going to export that list. Uh, we'll re-verify the leads, make sure they're still at the company, make sure the email address is still okay. And then from there, if the lead's not good, obviously we're just going to discard the lead. There's no point in trying to go back to them. But the lead is good. What we can do is we can import this, this lead to a new campaign. And yeah, so we can like kind of rerun these new leads um, and get the most out of our leads, right? Instead of losing them. Um, so that's if some, if, if an email goes through a full campaign and they haven't, you know, responded yet, we can still go back to them and contact them. But let's say they have responded. If if, of course, if they're not interested, we're just going to discard them. We're not going to refollow up with them. Um, but of course, if they show some other intent, right? If they're interested in some sort of course, this is where we're going to handle the inbox management and the way this is going to work. So these, these purple tags right here, um, we're having AI automa automatically tag each lead for each of its intents. 
Um, we prompted the AI within Smarly to have a 99% accuracy on actual intent. So we can rely on this um, and our inbox managers can rely on, rely on this for accurate data. And around this, we have reply templates in place. So we can have the inbox managers respond within five minutes and deal with all these different, you know, intents, right? Um, when these AI, when the AI tags people as a certain uh, intent, what we do is we have a channel specifically for like the ones that um, are interested or have some sort of like questions or whatever, anything that's not like an, a not interested or out of office. We have these replies pushed to a Slack channel for our inbox manager to get notified. And then what our inbox manager can do from there is she's going to receive a link to this reply. They can go to that link, click on it, go to that reply, go to a reply template, click on the reply template, fill a few data, and then send the reply. And boom, it's all done within five minutes, super fast. We're going to have AI doing this soon um, because we have found a few tools where AI can handle the entire process, which I'm not going to mention in this video because I don't, <laughs> I don't want other people to have it at the moment. Um, but yes, we are at, in the moment having um, AI or getting AI to be able to do all this, right? But still having inbox manager in place, um, they are still effective, right? But yeah, so those are, these are the different sort of intents um, and different ways we respond. Of course, pricing objection, we have an objection handling template in place. Um, I have a video, I have a whole video on uh, reply templates and or inbox manager in general. You can check that out somewhere on my channel or on my Twitter or whatever. Uh, more information, you wanna send contacts plus like any sales assets. Um, typically you could send like case studies here. So I typically link, link like three different case studies from clients and then you could pitch a meeting. And of course we're always pitching meetings on all of these, right? That's the whole goal. We're not trying to have a friendly conversation with them. We're trying to get them onto a meeting. That's the, that's the end goal, right? Interested, um, depending on what the interest is in, we'll send them an asset or info on, let's say it's like a free offer and then we're just gonna try to get them in the meeting to explain further. Meeting request, simple, schedule a meeting with them and figure that out. But if they get tagged as out of office, what's gonna happen here is we set up a out of office subsequence where it's gonna have a 14 day delay. And then that's gonna re-trigger after those 14 days. So we can still contact those out of office leads. And especially as the summer's coming up, a lot of people will be out of office. We want to be able to still, you know, have these leads go through and not have these weeds go, leads go to waste, right? But yeah. So let's say we've done all this, we responded to all these interested replies, um, any objections, et cetera, and they respond back to us. Um, if the meeting is not booked, what we're going to do is we're going to add them to, this is auto, also this is gonna happen automatically. They're going to be automatically added to a subsequence after two days if they haven't responded yet. Um, and this is done through the AI tagging. So anything that's tagged as more information, interested, all this stuff, um, they're automatically going to be added to a subsequence until they respond again. So if they respond again, then they won't, they won't receive emails over time, right? Because we don't want to mess it up. Um, so yeah, they will be added to a subsequence. This is typically three emails. Um, we don't go beyond three emails because after that point, I mean, they're probably not going to respond, right? So, but three emails is good. It's like you're getting them through the process. And inside of the subsequence, we can send more case studies. We can add another offer. Let's say do a more valuable front offer, add more to it. Uh, Cause they already showed intent. So they're a high quality lead. So do whatever we can to push them over the edge, right? That's what we'll do here. Um, and yeah, so email sent, let's say the lead has not replied. What we're going to do is let's just get rid of them at that point. I mean, yeah, it's at that point, it's just kind of like, you, you don't want to keep tagging them along or keep emailing them. They're probably not going to get back. Right. So we'll let them go. But if they do get back, um, obviously, if they're not interested, we're just going to discard them again. But if they are interested, um, <clears throat> of course, we're just going to pitch a meeting. The meeting's not booked. We're going to add them back to the subsequence. It's going to start having like, that funnel go through. Because if they do respond positive again, then we still want to continue to follow up with them. But if they haven't responded back and we're still following up like 10, 20 times, then it's pretty much useless, right? So we want to just leave them out, leave them alone. Then let's say that the meeting has been booked. Um, we want to confirm the call. Make sure you do that because with Google Calendar, 
they it doesn't automatically confirm the call sometimes. So you want to make sure that they are confirming the call so they don't forget. Because the thing is with cold email, um, since you are the one booking them in, the show rate is going to be lower than typical when it comes to like in inbound, right? Because with inbound, the person's you know filling out a form, doing all this stuff, and booking themselves in. So they have a lot more intent to shows up to this meeting, but you know, if you're targeting big CEOs or whatever, um, a lot of them are busy, right? So you gotta make sure that we're, we're reconfirming, we're setting up these, this, the pre-call sequence, right? If you don't have a pre-call sequence on cold email or outbound, um, your show rate or your show rate's gonna be super low. Like you need a pre-call sequence, right? So ideally what we have is, we have that's one that's two days before, um, so we have an email that gets sent out immediately. That's the confirmation email. And then we have one email that's sent two days before the meeting, another email that's sent 24 hours before the meeting, another email that's sent 12 hours before the meeting, another email that's sent you know two hours before the meeting, and then also a text message um, if we have their number, and then a final email sent 10 minutes before the meeting, right? So we're going really hard on making sure this person shows up to the meeting, right? Because again, we're booking them in, they didn't book in themselves. Um, obviously, they, you want they you want to confirm that they, they are they want you to send you a meeting invite, right? But yeah, but they didn't have to go through the full funnel, so they might they might forget or they might get hesitant, right? So we want to make sure we're just always on the top of their mind. And in this pre call sequence, this is where of course we can send more sales assets, send more case studies, things like that. Um, sending you videos, your VSL, really selling sending videos here is gonna be good because you want them to get like familiar with their face. Or let's say you have a closer. You can have your closer film a quick um, video, just be like, hey, I appreciate you booking this call. Um, I'm gonna be the one that you're speaking to. And then your closer can go over a brief presentation of what your service is about and all that. That's gonna make them super warm. So when they help on the call, there's zero confusion and they're just already gonna be really warm to the, the closers. There's not gonna be any shock to when they help on the call and they see it's like a different person or whatever, right? Now we'll finally take the discovery call. If the meeting wasn't shown, so I'll cover this first. What we want to do is we add them to a no-show sequence because we obviously we don't want to lo lose out on these leads, right? Uh, if they booked a meeting with you, that that's gonna be like the highest intent out of any of the intents, right? So we do. Um, so we're gonna send them about five email sequence. So it's a few more emails because again they booked a meeting with you, so we want to keep them accountable to that because uh, you know of course people get busy, people no-show, maybe they forgot, etc. The meeting's not, if the meeting isn't rescheduled after this five email sequence, um, you know, we kind of just get rid of the lead. You can circle back to them like a few months, um, just keeping the CRM, but typically we're not gonna harass them anymore, right? But if the meeting is shown, um, of course we're gonna take that meeting and this is where we're gonna see if, I mean, some people do a one call close or cold email. Our protocol is like minimum two calls. Um, typically if your deal size is bigger, if it's like five figures plus up front then you might need like three or four calls or five calls. Or if you're dealing with like really big companies, you might need 10 calls. But um, yeah, typically you're not gonna get one call close or a cold email. If you do, I mean, that's great. Then, you know, you can move forward. But ideally you wanna just go through this discovery phase and try to set up a follow-up call, right? And with this follow-up call, we want to make sure we have scheduled it, okay? And there's, there's a certain, um, there's two things we wanna do when we're scheduling this follow-up call. One, one thing what we want to do is we want to schedule the follow-up call in the call. We don't want to wait for after the call to schedule it because then that's where a lot of people just go ghost. Ghost. We want to schedule it inside the call, book the meeting on your calendar in the call, tell the person you're on the call with, look them in the eyes, tell them like, okay, did you receive the invite and can you accept it? Have them accept it in the call. So there's just no, there's no fluff here. There's no, there's no chance of a no-show. They are ready to hop on the next call. And ideally you want to set up that follow-up call next day or two days out. You don't want to wait any longer. Um, of course, some people need to like wait a week because they need to talk to the team, get info, et cetera. But what you want to do with this follow-up call, you want to go for the earliest available date and get that locked in, in the call. And if you if you think this is the second thing you do, and this is not necessary, but um, what you can do is you can if you if you think the if you think that the the time is right and like you can tell the person's super warm, they're like ninety nine percent down to work with you. What you can do is you can invite them to your Slack channel, and just have a Slack channel already built, right? Because then that makes the onboarding so easy. It's absolutely seamless. Like they're already in your Slack channel, they have a follow up schedule, follow up call scheduled to you. 
it's like at this point they're almost like they're kind of basically close like at that point right so if you can get them in your slack channel too uh, before the call ends then that's huge too and also you can follow with them in the slack channel to get them that follow-up call um so there's just like there's it's like almost guaranteed they show up to that follow-up call like at this point someone that's hopped in our slack and has scheduled a follow call um in the same call our close rate off that is like 80 percent. like it's very rare that people don't close after doing all that um because the onboarding process from there is just so easy and then let's say you know obviously that's the, that's the best case scenario but okay let's just say follow call scheduled um and you have that locked in right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna send pre-call sales assets and the best the best thing we've sent to clients before a sales call to close them on the on the second call has been filming a loom video going over your entire strategy or tailoring a strategy specific to the person that you're trying to close um, and then also diving into client case studies in that same video and we make this video pretty long i make it like 40 minutes long because i'm covering absolutely everything i'm going i'm going over entire strategy i'm going over exactly what we do for them and i'm also going into client accounts showing them literally everything I'm showing them exact email campaigns we're running for clients, the exact stats we're getting, the exact meetings we're booking. I'm showing them absolutely everything to where they watch that video and they hop on that follow-up call. It's absolutely no brainer for them not to go with us, all right? Because I mean, we showed them a client that was in their exact same situation. We showed them that we're getting results. We showed them the exact strategy we're going to deploy for them to get that result. So it's absolutely no brainer, right? It's absolutely no brainer. At this point, I'm going to take the follow-up call. The deal is not closed. Um, of course, you're going to schedule another follow-up because, you know, of course, maybe there's some other people that need to be spoken to or they need to wait a few months. You, you do that, right? Um, and then, you know, you keep going through the same process. And if it doesn't work out, it is what it is. But, yeah, typically you want to close them within two to four calls, depending on your deal size, though. Because, I mean, if you have, you know, six-figure deal size, it might take five plus, five plus calls. But um, that's all dependent on industry, right? But, okay, let's say the deal is closed. Now, this is where we're just going to send the automated onboarding workflow. If you don't have an automated onboarding workflow, welcome flow, then you are severely lacking. Um, you need the onboarding process to be super seamless. Like everything should be covered within the first first 24 hours, right? Everything that is needs to get started should be covered within at least the first 24 hours. And they should be fully confident that everything is in place to get things moving as soon as possible, right? Super easy to set up. You can set this up with Make, Zapier. Um, really, all you need is get them the Slack channel. Send uh, receive, send them whatever resources they need, and yeah, just get that going from there. If they need it to to be sent a type form, like an onboarding form, do that too. But yeah, you want to make this as fast as possible. This should all be automated. You shouldn't be doing this manually. Um, which yeah, if you work with this, will help you to create this on, automated onboarding work, welcome flow. If you don't have a place already, if you do, that's good. Then this is another thing they can do to actually maximize the people you take on to get you more clients. Um, so what we could do is you can actually offer, so let's say you run a, a retainer model. What you can do is you can offer a discount for the next month. So let's say you have a 5k retainer. <clears throat> you can offer, let's say like, okay, you, if they bring a referral for the next month or if they bring a referral to you next month, um, they can give you, or you can give them like a, let's say a $1,500 discount, right? So next month they only pay 3,500. So I just realized that I spoke referral run here. Um, <laughs> anyways, that was, that was bothering me, but yeah, so we can do it in the onboarding form. Uh, so let's say you have a, you have an onboarding form where you collect the information from them. Uh, you can have a question at the end of it saying like, okay, is there anyone that you can refer to us? Um, like just send their, their email address or like give us an intro to, and if so, then yeah, you want to give them a discount and give them like a 30% discount in the next month. Um, if not, then, you know, obviously just follow up in a few months once you've actually delivered for results. So then, of course, there you want to fulfill for the client, generate good results, of course, and then we want to multiply our success and to generate more clients because this is then in turn going to help us with our outbound process because, you know, we post our client results, that gets traction. If, let's say, you send cold emails, people are going to look you up. They're going to see all your client results. They're going to see all that. They're going to see on your website. And that's just going to make your cold email more effective, right? And then, of course, from here, you can ask for more referrals. And then you have just like an upward spiral of client acquisition, right? So that's the whole process. Um, yeah, that's everything from closing a client or from setting up email accounts to closing a client to then 
generating more clientele from referrals, from onboarding them, filling, filling good results, all that stuff. But yeah, hope this is helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this, of course, leave whatever feedback you have below. Um, if you run a B2B company, you can find us at realgrowth.ai. I will leave this in the description uh, under this video. You can book a call with us there. Um, we will help you scale with outbound. We build hyper-personalized campaigns around whatever target industry you're looking to do. And we'll also help you create a really solid front offer to get you from the door with these prospects. Cause as you've probably noticed, cold emails, the most difficult it's ever been. So you really have to innovate nowadays and we'll help you with that innovation process. Right? So yeah, hope you found this helpful. Cheers.